Uh, it's my great honor to have this opportunity to have this uh, uh, to introduce our work in this year's technical challenge, which is peripheral artery and vein enhanced segmentation. This challenge focuses on occlusive peripheral artery disease, oops, which is a common circulatory problem where narrow the blood arteries reduce blood flow to the limbs. And the detailed assessment of lower legs is very critical in treatment planning. And nowadays, high special uh, resolution images showing the details about the vessel wall as well as the stenosis can be produced by magnetic resonance imaging, such as using steady state free processing sequences. However, due to the time period of imaging, the contrasting agent will flow through both artery and veins, which cause them both to be enhanced. And it makes it difficult to separate them apart on the images. Thus, our goal is to build an automatic algorithm to segment both artery and veins at the same time from the pictures. We set up our method as following. First, we need to generate reference segmentation for the subsequent evaluation for the model. Then we train the model, and finally we test the model to evaluate the model performance. So in the step of reference segmentation, for artery, we manually labeled every five to 10 slices in the patient data, and then we use interpolation function embedded in ITK software, SNAP software, as well as the manual refinement to correct some mistakes caused by interpolation. And we use this as the reference segmentation for artery. As for vein, since the structure of vein is much more complicated than the artery, so we decided to segment the whole vessel system first using 3D level set uh, with ITK snap. Um, and then we also did some manual refinement to correct the mistakes caused by this semi-automatic 3D algorithm, a 3D level set algorithm. So this picture shows how we use 3D level set to create reference segmentation for the whole vessel system. And the picture on the right side shows how the whole vessel system looks like in 3D. And then we obtain the reference segmentation for vein by subtracting artery from the whole vessel system in the end. And nowadays, as you know, deep learning has been used, uh, has been, uh, has shown outstanding performance in image analysis and pattern recognition. For example, UNET, as um, named after the shape of the network, has been prevalently used as an efficient end-to-end -end model to do medical image segmentation. Uh, to prepare for training the model, we did some pre-processing to the training data. We, by the end of the uh, challenge deadline, we finished labeling four patient samples as training data. And then we crop each patient data into two separate lags so that we get eight separate lags. Each lag contains 832 slices so that we get the total number of over 6,400 6, slices for training. However, even if 2D dense unit has a great ability in doing medical image segmentation, we still face some specific challenges in this scenario. For example, first, if we use pure 2D dense unit, we lose a lot of information in the longitudinal direction, which we may take into account for uh, the higher accuracy. And also, if we do use a 3D dense unit, we face a problem of 
a small size of data, which may cause the model to overfit uh, quickly. And third, the segmentation object is also very relatively small compared to the anatomical context in the image, which may have a large portion of overlap errors, uh, which may cause it uh, difficult to tell if they are artery or vein. Uh, however, we just uh, plan to maybe throw the reference segmentation for both artery and the veins simply to the network and let them let the network learn the judgment by a human. So to solve the first problem, we come up with an idea of taking uh, five each five adjacent slices as a stack to input to put into the network so that we have the information in the longitudinal direction. And to tackle the second problem, we applied some data augmentation which contains some horizontal vertical shifting and random flipping <laughs> rotation scaling to create more data and so that we can enlarge our training data. As for the small object, we were inspired by some previous work relevant to this topic uh, which, that we can use multi-task learning to get higher accuracy in this uh, problem. So in multi-task learning, since we have reference segmentation for the middle slice in the input stack, uh, for both artery and the veins, through the training network, we can get predicted reference, uh, predict, predicted segmentation for vessels and arteries, so that we can calculate binary cross entropy between the reference and the predicted results. And we get the loss for both whole vessel system and the artery. In the upper part, to get the predicted results for whole vessel is called task one. And to get the predict segmentation for artery is called task two. By summing up both losses, we can get a total loss, which we can use to as a minimize minimization object uh, so that we can better our uh, unit network. Since we have obtained the predicted results for both artery and veins, we have to define the overlap pixel between the uh, two classes uh, so in this case, we say if the pixels is defined as whole vessel in task one, and at the same time it's classified as artery in task two, we say this this is belong uh, this is artery, and if it's defined as whole vessel in task one, but it's background in task two, we classify this as vein, and if they are defined as background in task one, and artery or, vein, uh, artery or battery in task two, we say this is background. So this is how we define the uh, overlap pixels between two different classes. So when we look at some results we get from the test data set given by the host, uh, this is the number uh, 365 slides in one test sample in in the patient uh, in the testing data set. So when we see the results in the axle slices, the segmentation result for uh, both artery and the veins look pretty decent, and we can also view them in 3D. Uh, there are still some missing trunks which indicate there might be 
some uh, uncertainty in the model, which may need more uh, data to be trained. Uh, and also, when we look at some slices containing occlusion inside, for example, when we look at the upper row, our reference segmentation contains occlusion in, in the uh, anatomical structure of vessel. However, it doesn't, the occlusion doesn't show in the test results, which may also indicate that more data containing occlusions or ischemic part should be uh, added into the model. So the time we spent on creating manual reference segmentation on one patient was about two hours, while the time for getting the test result on one patient sample using one GPU is only 40 seconds. And we adopted the dice coefficient to calculate the accuracy for the vessel uh, segmentation. And the accuracy for vein on one patient is 0.83. And for artery is uh, around 0.75. To summary, we could say they introduced the introduced 2.5D, as we called deep learning a neural network, could yield reasonable blood vessel segmentation MR images, and also the introduced model task learning could be an end-to-end -end solution for segmenting both the artery and the whole vessel system at the same time, and also may extensive training and evaluation would be needed on patient data sets. And finally, I would thank all of my colleagues and our attention. Thank you.